Jordan, you're the only Canadian here. If anyone here is Celine Dion, it's you. Have but you hey, seen a picture you... of Celine Dion? I don't look any... I'm way too fat to be Celine Dion. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, new the boss. Who's this? Dead Cells content update. It's ready for you, brave, brave alpha testers. You're gonna die. And OBS. Yeah, there's a handy guide from NVIDIA on how to stream to that Twitch tube thing. I'm gonna give him a grade. DXVA gets 1.0, and that means it's done forever, forever. And speedrunners spices things up with cocaine. To, we talk about the about page of Steam that should set the tone for the rest of the show and F audio makes its way into mainline wine having compiled and tested it with fallout 4 it's no silver bullet ladies and gentlemen boys and girls i'm vin stone that's jordan's fang and uh one pigeon mateus and that's you down there in chat room dynamic helping us form that last little bed known as cocaine voltron um what's going on in everyone's lives jordan you start while i refresh the discord chat which likes to freeze Oh yeah, no, it's been it's been doing that lately. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's I, I bought I bought my tickets for scale. I'm gonna be up at four o'clock in the morning on Monday, and I'm gonna arrive at four twenty in the afternoon on <laughs> Monday. Um, so that 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 that, that that's the thing. Um, I, I I don't know. I've, that that that's really. Oh, I've I've been I've been trying to diagnose the stupid fucking network problem we've been having. Oh so man. We're, it's it's a it's a weird one. It's a weird one. I, I left a ping test running overnight, and like mm-hmm. after we were done, no further issues. Uh, this morning, this morning, I rolled back to kernel four nineteen. So we're gonna see if that fixes it. We got to get it sorted out, man. I mean, it's really hurting our show on Chatterbait. It really is. <laughs> like pe- people get really close to climaxing, and then like I freeze, and then they're just like, "No, that's 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 not my kink. I didn't pay for this." <laughs> no, Pedro, what are you about to hold up? I'm about to hold up this stupid little tablet, which is an Asus Vivo Smart Tab thing. It's one of those x86 Windows tablets mm-hmm. that I was trying to install Linux on, and it's like... I, t- I told the boy right in Discord, and I was like, not gonna happen. Y- y- that you did, yes. It's like, um, yeah, I know that the power of VR uh, GPU that these things they have... They are Linux resistant. Yeah, they are, and it's... It, the annoying bit is you can almost get certain Debian based distros to run or Debian itself, but as soon as it gets to the point where it starts mounting the root file system on the um on the live image, mm-hmm. it just goes, and uh, nope, I'm just going to freeze right here and not let you go any further. So false hope. God maybe maybe it's it. are, are you are you using butterfs? Maybe that's your problem. It's not even loading the live image. I'm not using any FS at that point. <laughs> ben, Ben, how has ButterFS improved your life? I'm allergic to it, man. Um, hey, over here. I ordered a used Xbox controller because fuck you, Microsoft. I'm not giving you money. And I didn't get a wireless receiver, which I didn't know. I ordered like the most generic ass... $14, like, Xbox 360 compatible thing. Mm-hmm. Plugged it in. Done. It was nice. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, nothing. Just boop, boop. All right. Huh. I, I kind of expected that because people be awesome to each other. If you're going to buy something on Amazon and it's something like that, and you're like, I don't know if this is going to work under Linux. Take two seconds. Be a hero and leave that comment. Because that's what I saw on that generic thing I bought. It's like, works great in my Raspberry Pi Retro Arcade. It's like, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, well, I knew that, that, that's, the, that's the litmus test, too. If it runs fine on the Raspberry, then you can just plug that into an X86 right. box. It's like, oh, no, no problem. Right. Yeah. In yeah. worst case scenario, you can make it work. You know? Yes. <laughs> With a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, I'll just the put it right pie pass through. Yeah, I'll, I'll get the PCIe pie hat. <laughs> All right. Well, spe- speaking of pie hats, I have no way to transition into this. It's the Steam. Let it stop dead. Oh, what? 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 Oh, you yes. talking about, Pedro? Willis. Well, it's it. It is certainly about 
something, and it's the about page of Steam that got a little bit of a revamp, and uh, people on Reddit went apeshit. And then, I guess it was a slow news day, because PC Gamer decided to pick up on the shoops that those people on tre- uh, on Reddit had uh, come up with, and, like, write a story about it. It's, Whoa. um... I, I, I just I just want to call attention to this because this is this is the thing that pisses me off about this article. <laughs> it, it it does some like straight up Betteridge headline shit where it's like, have we just had a glimpse of Steam's new UI design? And then the byline is no, no, no. yeah. <laughs> this, this is all we have. This is it. Yeah. The, yeah, it's the new about page. It gives you a little GIF that you see someone launching Portal and opening the overlay with the mouse. That's odd uh but just going off of that little initial frame that shows the steam like the um, the actual steam library in a very hyper simplified uh fashion and people just went off on it it's like oh there's like two different um uh, people who came up with designs that could work like that it's like yeah you can make that with just a skin for Steam that people have done it before. It's Valve, but, man. Listen, they are yeah. busy right now refining the new card game that's crushing the internet. <laughs> the so, no, 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 yes. they're, 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 they're pumping they're pumping money into that auto chess shit, man. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, the, the Dota Two mod. Yeah, yeah that, that's something we need to talk about. Before that, we need to find out if the Freeman has a bald spot. I mean, I I don't think he does. Freeman has a luscious head of hair. Uh, this is Half Life Top Down. It's on Mod DB, and it is a wonderful little Half Life mod that allows you to play the entirety of Half Life One from a top down perspective, as if you were playing Grand Theft Auto, like the OG Grand Theft Auto, or like I guess Teleglitch or something like this. Um, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's it's interesting, right? It's I'm I'm curious if you can if you can tie this in with like the Spyro the Dragon mod. Cause that would be that would be kind of <laughs> that would be kind of fucky. But I do I do I do like the idea that people are like t- Half Life has been some this mainstay in PC gaming enough that people are like trying to fuck with it to make new things, sort of like Doom and or mm-hmm. Quake, where like yeah, where where they're they're sort of taking the bare bones and modifying it to make new and interesting things. So it's good to see that Half Life is sort of oh yeah, one hundred percent. When I was thinking about mods like that, yeah, with all the Quake Three stuff, I think could we get. I mean, I'm sure this exists, though, the more I think about it, it is like a Quake 3 rally done with a Half-Life engine. Oh, God. So it's it's <laughs> race. It's, it's, it's just the fucking uh, hover car racing segment from Half-Life 2, the game. Yeah. Nine. You race head craps. <laughs> You ride so it's, it's it's still it's still fucking controls it's like, like the, kitty cat the, rodeo man. It's Doctor Kleiner's secret lab with a bunch of head crabs just racing each other. Yeah. It'll be awesome. <laughs> yeah, just, just just rip off a bunch of Mario Kart levels too. Throw it in there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's not the only game update we got this week. No, no, it's not. And the subject we talked about it a while back, and uh, well. It's out now. It's on Linux. It's available. You can play it. And uh, it's uh, it's uh, your space amnesia with a dash of portal style tori- uh, storytelling. Uh, and yeah, it's. Uh, oh, yeah, I really no, 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 thought story. you were going to say a uh, dash of Tory spelling, but all right. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean to, to be fair, that thing looks like fucking GLaDOS. That's that's not even that. Yes, <laughs> and the, the 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 way that they are, at least the trailer conveys the story, it's like, okay, there's some portal elements to this, uh, but yeah, it's very much like puzzles and horror spoopy without the weapon, so you basically, if the spoopy thing comes, you need to run away, uh, and you can get it for £7.19, so I'm guessing it's like ten ninety nine US. Yeah, yeah no, get, get, get this, uh, the, the hotfix is... Previously, you could not launch this through Steam. You'd have to actually go click on the EXE. Now you can finally launch it through Steam. Progress. Progress. <laughs> yes. Um, but but yeah, like honestly, like the 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 station design or whatever really reminds me of uh, Alien Isolation a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, it's but price I, to I, sell. I mean, what nine ninety nine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You try. And it, it, and it fucking <laughs> launches now. Hooray! <laughs> Wonders will never cease. <laughs> All right. Uh, I mean, they recommend a 970, so I guess graphically it's demanding. Pedro, uh, your favorite uh, game. It's got an update. Dead Cells, uh, Resident <laughs> Giant. Additional content available in the alpha branch, up to including uh, a new burst. Yep. 
That's in there. It's the thing. Uh, That's my purse. I don't know you. I, I, I tried this just out of curiosity. I was like, okay, I, I don't know if it's part of the game, but the damn game finally gave me like this lightning whip. And I just proceeded to murderate everything until I got bored. It's like, where was this when we were reviewing the game? <laughs> However, uh, the new content has been built to, as they say, give a more in-depth to Denzel's endgame, I guess. I don't know who the fuck can make it to the end without punching their monitor. Um, new biome, new boss will be accessible before you beat the game the first time. And as I said, a fifth boss cell is now available. Uh, d- d- does this uh, make your ovaries pulsate, Pedro? Uh, pretty sure my ovaries dropped when I was born and came I think they balls, dried up. But, uh, <laughs> shriveled up. I honestly, uh, I tried it. It works. It uh, didn't really give me any fancy weapons as I started, mostly because I already unlocked the random melee weapon thing that you could get. So, uh, yeah, I always get a random melee weapon. But I can't even get past the second boss. So... Apparently there's five bosses now, so the, yeah, those final Has three, anybody I ever actually gotten past the second boss, or are they just fucking with us, man? Just like, I have oh, no idea, fun. but I'm guessing someone has, because mm. apparently I, that cells end game is a thing. <laughs> Indeed. Um, uh, they, they do they do have a warning in here, though. Apparently, um, you may want to back up your save game, because... Oh, cons- uh, yeah, if you're in the alpha, yeah. you just yeah. do a burner. If mm-hmm. you're trying to, I don't know the point of fucking permadeath, man. What's the point of a save game, really? Uh, um, well, because because like there, you can as as you play, you can unlock stuff to like make future runs yeah. easier. Do you know a game so. that needs permadeath? Uh, speedrunners, Rocket League, <laughs> <laughs> Demolition Derby, Rocket League. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, but sp- sp- speaking speaking of uh, speedrunners, it's time to do some cocaine. So. Uh, they've added they've um, added a new mechanic to speedrunners called Boosta Coke. Uh, you can collect them. Uh, they're they're another pickup item. Oh, I thought and it was just do- a map in Colombia. All right. Fine. No, I, I mean no. yeah, also also yes, it can it can be more than one thing. Um, but yeah, you can you can pick up Boosta Cokes, and everyone you pick up will increase your speed a little. They bit. They have a demo. Uh, they they do. Um, I mean they, they've had they've it's had Windows a only, but yes. Yeah. Oh, like that stops us these days, right? Uh, and to, to be fair, if you if if you don't own this game and you're Linux user, buy this game. It's great. Um, but yeah, uh, you can uh, getting getting hit or blown up will cause you to drop cokes that other people can pick up, and yeah. So I'm I'm curious how big of a, a of an advantage this will actually give you, because um, like may- maybe maybe it will give you a little bit more forgiveness if you fuck up the turns because most of that game is you you can you can go at a fairly moderate clip you just gotta make sure you time your jumps right and like not knock into shit. Mm-hmm. And I can't help but feel like this particular mechanic is not going to do much to you know help people who are already lagging behind. It's only going to increase the divide between the people who can go exactly where they want to Man, go. And it those has that definitely can't. turned into one of those games. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, the active community still playing it, but if you play online, you will definitely run into the person. Uh, this is what I do. This is my hobby. Fuck who off. Will, who will, this will is my video down. game. <laughs> I will wait for you for 20 seconds and still beat you. <laughs> True story. <Indeed>. Hey, uh, <laughs> seven alphas forever. Oh, <laughs> part 19,000 survival horde. Well, a 17.2 is out. It's a zombie. It's survival back when that was a thing. Remember that like four or five years ago? Mm-hmm. Anyway, it, <laughs> I tried it. I'm always curious. I was like, maybe this game's going to get good. Plus, they're dicking around with Vulcan support. Made it as far as character selection screen before it just hung. Uh, Looted it again with OpenGL. No love for the Steam overlay. I was like, wah, wah. Man, they got some crack cooking going on here, don't they? Um, (laughs) Yeah, that's that's, that's poor formatting. With the OpenGL render, with everything on high, averaging about 50 with a 2060. I did tick that Vulcan box just because we've tried it a couple of times and it was a kaleidoscope of pink and confusion. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to guess that the Vulcan render, which is experimental, is only going to work if it experimentally gets fixed by Unity. And that button just happens to work. I, I've not seen any progress in the past year on that. Yeah, yeah it's, we're, at this point... 
I think they're uh, cons- uh, just waiting for Unity to release their whole game because they're just waiting and they're putting out these minor um, alphas, I guess. And they've been doing this for how long? Hey, man, the main reason I'm bringing this up is because this update, they've renamed Bone Shiv to Bone Knife. And that's really all you needed to know. I mean, I don't think they're ready for Bone Saw. Uh, so, um, so th- this this next game, you got to kind of work to see the store page, at least on Yeah, my you end. do. <laughs> yeah, you need to be logged in to see it because apparently it's adult <laughs> content only. It's called Kiss Me, <laughs> and it's uh, very representative of the state of the Steam Store nowadays. So the uh... <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you know, I, I I went to yeah. the cash page. You, you, you may want to you, you may want to not let that video play. I'm just oh, telling right. you. Know. Um, uh, does the video have anything? I think I saw it. I didn't see I, anything, but it, whatever. It, I I I I, th- I think it had some nipples. I don't know. Um, I'll investigate. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, but, but, but yeah, like, it's yeah. uh, it's a 2D platformer st- style of situation. It's still in early access, but the as someone very keenly pointed out in their discussion forums, the gameplay is exactly like another game that's already available on Steam called Hentai 3018, <laughs> and yeah, uh, I guess the only difference here being that this one has a CG video of that particular anime character, uh, then hey, hey man, it's already got DLC and it's not out yet, man. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. No, oh, there's oh, yeah. already $2 worth of DLC and the game isn't even out yet. Uh, well, well, did you well, see the- that whatever it was, it was like dress up 3d doll. No, it was like doll fight simulator, nudie, whatever. <laughs> and they released like 70 DLCs. It took up the front page in the Linux section on games for like three days this week. Nice. I, I, I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to do hentai those DLCs, doll fights, but <laughs> if, if you're going to do hentai doll fights, you better give people the opportunity to customize their hentai doll, right? <laughs> Um, oh, there's a there's a game called Boobs Em Up <laughs> that, that oh, came wow. out recently. Dude. Oh wow! Dude. <laughs> it, it's no call of booty. <laughs> yeah. I, I I I I don't know if for, for the people who are interested in this game, it's basically like a crappier version of the bridge where you play a lesbian who explodes when men touch her. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if if this tickles your fancy, it's available on Steam. I think maybe the Atomic Asses bought it, and only that. Possibly. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> what do we have up next? Oh, Living Waking Nightmare. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, te- tech support. I, I, I mean, I, I, I get the sense that, like, you, p- people who, like, drive trucks for a living can't play, like, Truck Simulator. Much in the same way, people who, like, work IT for a living cannot play these sorts of games. Seriously, this is a tech support error unknown, and it is a um, it is a, a point to click adventure puzzle game where you take on the role of a tech support person and try to uncover a mystery. Uh, it's basically a Windows 10 simulator. It kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Damon 9, but a lot less ARG like so you don't mm-hmm. have to actually go outside the game to figure shit out. Um, and yeah, it will work with any version of Ubuntu according to the uh, system requirements, any version ever. You get to experience, uh, what is it, Quasar Spectrum OS for free. So it's basically yes. Haiku. <laughs> or, no, 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 it's BlackBerry OS, clearly. Um, yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is, apparently that's the only thing you get in the demo. You just get the desktop environment, you get to play around with it. Dude, this this should have, like, we could make, like, legit, like, get everyone together to think about this, like, grandparent tech support simulator. It's, 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 it's a power drill, and if you drill yourself through the head, you lo- you win. Oh no, no, no! It, it's got straight up hard mode. You you got to tell them how to install the new ca- cable modem over the phone. Mm-hmm. Ooh. 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 Ah, see, <sighs> setting that, up that, Wi-Fi. That, that 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 was my job for a while. Was like explaining networking to old people in like municipalities, and that, I I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> no, <laughs> you, you can't make me do it. I won't. I won't. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> All right, fine. Toys of War. Toys of War. Unlike Gears of War, is a lot less shoulder pads. Uh, it's it's basically um a game where you drive around and try to shoot people. Um, and mother of God, they actually included online multiplayer. It's so oh. rare these days that like you can you can play with your, play these multiplayer games with your friends because mm-hmm. they all live in other countries but yeah it, it's basically it's a tank game you drive around you try to shoot uh, everyone um the different vehicles have different properties 
Uh, and apparently, they, uh, according to the reviews, the game modes, they have about 16 of them, are actually relatively unique enough that it keeps most of the gameplay fresh. So it's a decent party game. Hmm, yeah, um, that all sounds very, very good. So what's the caveat here? Um, the caveat is you gotta, I don't know, Beluga. Stand on your, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> sit on your head and do it. Yeah. And, eat, <laughs> and, and have sex with the Beluga will. I mean, the price is pretty acceptable it's got online multiplayer the system requirements all seem reasonable i mean you're probably not running ubuntu 1204 in 2019 but hey <laughs> i would not throw that out there man <laughs> people are still running windows xp pedro like Dude. it's all right that that that's its own thing people are still running windows 7 <laughs> we weren't running windows 7 at work until like Three months I, ago? I, 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 mean, I, mean, I, I, I gotta rephrase that. People are proudly proclaiming this. No, I run Windows 7. Oh, yeah, those people. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, l listen, they're they're happy to not get any more security <laughs> updates, and I uh -huh. think we should respect their choice. This is true. This is true. Mm -hmm. All right. Coming up next, we talk about why Ven is going to be dropping $180 in the very near future. Wah, wah. news are right around the corner but before we get to that we'd like to take some time to thank you thank you all very very much yes uh -huh. for letting too us too, do too this. much time not enough crime More you crime. can help us commit you can help us commit crimes by going to linux weekly daily wednesdays and watching those videos and also going to pay also go to LinuxGameCast.com, <laughs> clicking the support button following one of the various links there that allows you to support us monetarily oh yeah, you can even yeah, you can close <laughs> your much. clothe your sinful body with our stuff. Uh, may maybe Teespring won't fuck it up, and you'll get one that actually looks hey, like what it should. Uh, true story, <laughs> Joe. Uh, go back and watch Weekly Daily Wednesdays. Uh, the Hell Ox mugs, legit. They finally got it right. So oh, we're good on that good. field. Nice. No more, no more uh, collectors items with the mugs. It's, 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 it's a miracle, <laughs> my god. Um, you want you want to be another cool dude or another type of cool dude? You can head on over to our Amazon wish list and buy us some stuff. You can be our fuck buddy. Go on, go on Frank's fine upstanding cannibal wall. It's right over there. Say, oh, say hi, Frank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, if if you send us a note, we'll even read it on the air. And of course, all the cool kids go to Patreon.com/slash Linux Gamecast. Super sweet. Yeah, become become a Patreon. Get access to cool shit like our Discord or timed exclusive access to videos that we put out. Maybe we invite you to play some video games with us on the Thursday stream or the Friday stream this or one true. of the impromptu ones or, that or I we're like, oh, get it, get in the fucking game right now, Sandy. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? You're fucking here? Get it. What, what what are you doing talking to us? Get in the fucking game. Quit quit watching. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and if, if if you if you want to have that sort of relationship with us, you can just give us a bunch of money on Patreon. <laughs> you get you get um, some uh, built-in friendship on that, man. Come hang out with yeah. us in the Discord because uh, we we uh, I I would say eccentric, but none of us have enough money. We're, we're just a little off, but uh, like a hundred yes, people in our Discord a little. chat. <laughs> it's great. It's a fun place to hang out, and uh, we're actually in there because I know a couple of people I back on Patreon. I'm in their Discord. They're not in there ever. Not yeah. that I'm the like, hey, how are you doing? Come. But I was like, it'd be nice if you communicated with the people that watch your show. Yeah, come, come hang mm -hmm. out with all the other lonely nerds in our Discord. Pedro will he post ad if Pedro gets something like a tablet, you'll be the first to know about it and watch me go. Pedro, you can install Linux on that. <laughs> then, like multiple days later, Pedro will open a show with I couldn't install Linux on this tablet. It's content. This, it, it, you, you gotta you gotta plant your content seeds in the soil and water them, and then they grow into wonderful Pedro trees that you can pluck. Yes, and Pedro <laughs> trees uh, coming to you next year from LGC. Uh, Chia Pedro, Pedro. How, how does that work? Uh, Chia, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. They're Pedro it, size. It, it, they're like yeah, one no, size sized me. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's like a Chia pet that you have to waterboard, <laughs> and it grows pot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 okay right. let's, 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 enough, enough dicking around let's, let's talk about some actual shit all right this is from TechSpot. links to all this in our show notes we finally get word that we are going to be getting the gtx 1660 it's not and gonna look like that no it's not nope. it's gonna look it's gonna look way uglier um we're, we're gonna get them in about march or april in around that time um the the pricing seems to be a bit consistent with what we've been suspecting the 1660 is gonna be going for about 229 us and the 1650 will be going for uh, about 180 dollars us which is consistent with the 50 series cards at that sort of price performance index mm -hmm. um 
if it if it i mean the the 1660 apparently comes with the uh new envy encoder uh, if the 1650 does then i know for 100 percent ven is just going to buy it because he has no choice <laughs> look, 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 look at him look at him mug look at that it's so cute um <laughs> <laughs> Ladies right. and gentlemen, yeah, hundred eighty dollars. That it is fucking yoink territory. Mm. And yeah, we're looking at the RIP the nine eighty on that. But what do you think the performance is going to be like? Because the eleven sixteen sixty eighty whatever non RTX Mayo whatever that last one was, <laughs> that being touring minus any of the useless shit that my twenty sixty has on it that can play Quake at four frames a second with ray tracing it actually pretty much traded blows with the 1070 which was like that's better than i was expecting yeah and uh if the leaks that came out a while back are to be believed then the 1650 will perform very similarly to the gtx 780 which is significant because we're talking about 970 plus performance at that point uh so yeah that's that's pretty good for 180 bucks MSRP, assuming it comes out at MSRP. Because if it is anything like the current 1660 Ti, then it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be an add-in board partner card only. Well, they so yeah. they're going to price it at whatever they want. I, I, I mean, if, it, if it's going to be performing at like the 780 levels, I'm curious if you can actually play Raven's Cry off it. <laughs> no, you got uh, the right hardware. You're yeah, just using it wrong. <laughs> you, that, that's when you that, 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 that's when the um, RTX kicks in, yo. Um, man, uh, you were talking about PCIe power. You know, they can get around that. They just make it a like dual PCI slot. <laughs> like, what does stick up to? Ew. Also, also yeah. that, that, that wouldn't work for a lot of motherboards. Also, if they fucking do that, I'm sorry. I did not mean to will that into existence. <laughs> that yeah, be. no, if, 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 if that happens, it is entirely Ven's fault, and you can you can take yeah. out your rage on it, him. It's got, like, yeah. a type, the equivalent of a Type R sticker. It's just got, like, a fake NV link over the top to make it look... <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it, it's straight up got, like, a spoiler and spinning rims. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one card. <laughs> the power connector running over there, but it's, you know, diced up. No, no, yeah, no, it, it, nice. just lead, it just leads out to an extension cord to your neighbor's house. Yeah. Yeah. If you can All catch right. it. All right. <laughs> All right. DXVK. Um 1.0. It's the it's the big 1.0. It's finally here, um, you guys. Yeah, so now you can finally use the XVK. Uh, I mean <laughs> It, 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 it's semantic versioning, right? Like uh, they they eventually hit the end of like the point nine thing, so now they decided let's let's just go to one um, They added some D three D or DXVK HUD API options, so you can set you can display the full API level. Some Rad V Rad V fixes, some uh, Resident Evil two fixes, um, and yeah, there, there's nothing really groundbreaking here. It seems just be a lot of like minor performance issues here or we we fix the thing here or here's here's a little functionality that will uh perform that will improve performance in gpu bound scenarios which i guess is a good thing that means that the project is starting to stabilize and they can start just improving the can i play my overwatch <laughs> you've been able to do that for fucking years i i don't know yeah so you, it's not on steam though but you can use the xvk with just regular wine yeah. <laughs> um they, they also have a new installer uh they got rid of the wine tricks verb uh and now there's a script that allows it, you to switch a little more easily between the xvk and wine's own uh, dx11 dx12 stuff well they didn't get rid of it they just changed it because yeah, that's yeah. actually one of the very good things it's like oh yeah what you want to get the xvk running on some random wine prefix just run wine tricks dxvk that's it can't you That's just like copy the DLL and the other thing just drop in the directory and be like, there we go, 1.0. You can do that, or you can type two words into your terminal. I can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> I keep typing SL and a train comes on the screen. I just want to know what's in my folder. You, I just you, uh, want to know. Some of this shit I have alias. <laughs> Just straight up dyslexic, oh. man. Oh, oh yeah. When, 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 like you, you have your aliases set up so that you can basically just face match on the keyboard. Pretty much. <laughs> it's like you can get the desired result done. And this All is right. not. This is not something you immediately do. This is after years. And you're like, fine. You just admit defeat. Yeah. I'm not, already, yeah. This, I, I, I just can't word. type this word. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So start whining, Pedro. Yeah, so uh, if you've ever wondered what wine sounds like, well, it sounds like buffer underruns, especially if you have an XNA uh, game that 
is using XNA2, uh, the most egregious of which, which I have had the pleasure to ex uh, experience, is Fallout 4. But Ethan Lee, you may know him as uh, Flippity Dib 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 Babo. Or that really uh, cute girl in photos. Yeah, he. That's a good looking man. Uh, but he's been working on F Audio, which is a complete re implementation of X Audio 2, which will let people basically just run their X Audio games on whatever platform they feel like it. And Wine being, you know, Wine, they said, yeah, that's useful. We'll take that. And it, now it is a part of the mainline Wine uh, from version 4.3, which is out right now so it's uh that's very good to see and if uh you know valve ever decides to update proton to use a 4.3 base uh right around the same time that uh oh, xse 414 <laughs> well I, I i i mean so valve is paying ethan to do this right so i assume that it's yes. gonna get backported eventually and in Proton 316, there's actually, they made a little clever hack that lets you use F-Audio, and the library is actually in the, it's just in the root folder for Proton. If you go to Steam, Steam apps, common Proton 316 beta, it's just there, and if you compile your own, you can just compile the latest version, drop it in there, test it, which is what I did, to see if it fixed the issue with Fallout 4 and the sound cutting off. It does not. It's Listen, man, I've off. had multiple people over the past couple of weeks tell me that having to compile things in Linux is like butterfly surgery with rockets. Uh, no, so, it's so, literally so, you so, copy-paste so really the commands no. from GitHub. You're a hacker. I don't understand. <laughs> no, no, You're not no, making no. Linux easy <laughs> to use and user-friendly. I'm going to reinstall Arch. No, there, there's, there's, just a, there's just an Emacs macro for doing that, so I can just use that. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Dev. Neo.dev? Yeah, yeah, I, I go, saw that. Yeah. Go to emacs.dev or go to vi.dev. Yeah. 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 All right. They're, 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 fucking, they're fucking with people. Yeah. It's brilliant. I do yeah. love it. OBS, NVIDIA. Um, think a little thing, man. That new NVN code hotness, or you can use it with your old NVN code hotness. I'm using both. Why not both? Uh, it's a little guide if you want to stream to the Twitch tubes or anything. Reasonably set up, too. I mean, this is like, wow. Uh, that's basically exactly how I do everything. Uh, what we're doing, 1920 by 1080 at 60, we're not sending six, because guess what? Twitch will take eight. It won't like it, but it'll take it. Um, <laughs> you can take it. Oh, YouTube why? will take whatever you can throw at it. YouTube's <laughs> cool, man. Uh, recommended settings. This looks frighteningly the same as our record and stream. Uh, 6,000, if you want to stick with that. I throw eight on there. Uh, hardware mm -hmm. encode and V encode. We don't have access to advanced encoder settings. Or the, uh, so you won't be able to do the psychovisual tuning and the B-frame guest to read ahead thing, but that is coming. Uh, recording pass, eh, everything else is legit. This is all Windows bullshit we don't care about. Yes. <laughs> uh, Which yeah. was the big one. It's like all of everything else outside of like the OBS specific settings, that's all very Windows centric. Mm -hmm. Max quality, yeah. high profile. Again, you won't have look ahead or a sack of visual tunings. Those aren't exposed in OBS. Right now under Linux, they were for a minute, but they don't really do anything even if you do make them show up. Uh, keyframe interval 2. I keep that at 0. Just That's auto. It's going to go to 2 anyway. And uh, I don't enforce streaming service encoder settings because we streamed to different things. Yep. Mm hmm no, it's actually very nice to see at video they came out. It's like, oh yeah, no, this is these are the settings that you should use. Oh, that looks very familiar. That's basically the screenshot of my own OBS things with the extra Windows only options. But look at there. them gains, bruh. <laughs> bruh. Gains. Ooh. <laughs> it's uh comparatively speaking between the old Pascal series like this 1080 and Venn's 2060. RTS yeah, the on 2060. Your ass. Yeah, it's going to uh, give you a lot better image quality and work much less to give you it's, that much better image quality. It, I mean, it, it's it's on par with what H.264 medium or some shit like that. So, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. It is Which basically, you basically need a second PC to do. If you be <laughs> patient and buy the cheap, as long as it's not severely kneecapped. I mean, if you got like a 1080 or 1070 or something like that. Buy one of those fucky little NVIDIA cards that are coming out for 180 mm -hmm. bucks. It's like, boom, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. done. Indeed. Get yourself some of that sun. Uh, 
okay, we're going from OBS to OMG. Oh, yes. Gog. Gog. So, uh, there's been a bit of a kerfuffle going on with the uh, gaming industry as a whole, not Linux specific, but uh, the it's gaming the industry as a whole. Yeah, and it's, uh, well, uh, Activision reported the best gains ever, and they laid off a bunch of people, and uh, then there were talks of some other AAA uh, publishers doing the same thing, and now GOG also laid off at least a dozen people, according to the Kotaku article. And if you look online, there was another article from VG247, uh, uh, which also basically confirmed what Kotaku was saying and added that besides getting rid of people, uh, GOG was also canning their fair price package, which was a pretense from the get-go. Uh, which, yeah, got around the regional pricing of some games, which was never really a thing. Basically, all they did was they give you store credit to make up for the regional price difference. And yeah, you it was just GOG credit, so you could only ever use it in the GOG store. Uh, they made a really cringy video a while back. There's a link in the show notes if you want to go look at that. It's, yeah, it was just bullshit from the get-go. But apparently they're not doing too good. I guess. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, apparently not. There's a bunch of speculation going on in this article, at least. That yeah. Well, a lot um, of people are, maybe, like, speculating. A lot of people are glossing over that GOG has 20 open positions, like, right now. I don't think they're going under, especially being, you know... The babby the of people, the Witcher Three yeah. folk, <laughs> yeah, and and but and that that that's interesting because like uh, the the fired employees were saying like they were they were told that this 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 is a financial decision. Gog is not doing well, and we need to let you go. Um, mm -hmm. There's some speculation that this has to do with um, Gog trying to shore up their position in as a response to the Epic Store trying to cut some costs so that they can continue to compete. I don't I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know. Um, like the one thing that really bugs me a little bit is like regional pricing because like just listening to some of our brothers and sisters like in Argentina, mm -hmm. they get Brazil, they up, in Brazil, <laughs> they end up paying more US in USD mm -hmm. for digital. Like, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> no reason. He's like, ha ha, deal with it. They're, they're like uh, North America's Australia when it comes to pricing. Yeah, ridiculous. <laughs> oh, hopefully these guys don't pull a Desura. That that's my concern. I don't. Uh, they're way too big to pull a Desura. <laughs> you say that, but <laughs> way too big. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's all to do about not, but definitely I think. But uh, I mean, Gog, I. <sighs> I never think of GOG as anything other. I never think of it as an actual store to buy. Like a new game comes out. I know I could get it on GOG. Fuck you. You don't support Linux. Um, Pretty much. I'm going to buy it on Steam. Mm hmm. <laughs> what? What? I'd buy it yeah, on Yeah, no, GOG buy used to GOG. be great. Uh, well, I if get you wanted... old games. I need assets yeah. for Team Fortress or something. Not Team Fortress, uh, Unreal Tournament. And okay, I would I go to GOG and then <laughs> four or five quid. And I'm done with it. Yeah, and if you just wanted to get, like, a game that you knew worked with wine, and chances are it would work better if you just grabbed the GOG installer, install that, rather than having to set up Steam through wine, and then run that on top of everything else. Yeah, no, just... Just get the GOG installer to be easier. I, 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 yeah, I mean, no. and, and, until until you gotta a, a reinstall that game, b get an update, and then mm -hmm. you gotta. It's it's just annoying. Well, yeah, yeah, it's just I, I I didn't live the Steam life until it really came to Linux, and I was like, oh, this is how normal people live. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't have a games <laughs> folder that I half haphazardly update occasionally, maybe with like nineteen <laughs> part patches. I. God, you do uh, that, really. Oh, oh yeah. I'll, 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 also, hey, my save game picks up on from this other PC I started up uh, the game on. That's that's oh. nice. Yeah. Cloud, Cloud saves. saves. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that, that, hey. that, that's the big one. <laughs> uh, hey, I, I can forgive not having cloud saves for what we're about to talk about. Oh, yeah. And speaking of uh, grabbing assets, because you can now get Morrowind on GOG if you'd like to play with OpenMW. And they put out a couple of updates over the uh, month of February. Uh, the big one we being that the multiplayer fork, uh, we talked about it on the show a while back, which was the uh, OpenMW 
multiplayer MP. or something or just yeah yeah it's just more, more, yeah it was a t yeah. tsm tes3 mp test 3 yeah that's the one uh and it's now official they basically brought them under the official open mw wing and uh the fact that shadows which was the one big missing feature from um open mw itself are now coming and they are being uh actively worked on and a dude who's been working on it has claimed that the performance impact should be relatively minimal so that's nice that's very good yeah the um the, the other thing they've done with this uh, update here uh is they're they're they've announced that they're starting to focus more on trying to get uh, open mw working other working with other uh, game brio engine games uh like uh, fallout new vegas fallout 3 elder scrolls marwind or not Morrowind. uh Oblivion, Oblivion and Skyrim, yeah, um, and yeah, so that that that's cool. It's it's nice to see that uh, the engine is now in a stable enough state where they can start trying to reverse engineer stuff from other games, and then we can finally start holding our breath for Open Skyrim. Open Skyrim <laughs> job is going to be a thing, man. I even learned, which I didn't know, that there is an experimental branch of um, OpenMW where you can load those game Brio files from Skyrim and they, te- mm-hmm. you can technically walk, you can walk around like four frames a second, but, and you know, no shadows of course, or textures ish, yeah. um, <laughs> but it's come a long way. We're talking about something that started with ogre 3d. Yeah, yeah, no, and now it's using open scene graph, and the performance now is actually very, very good compared to well, Ogre. <laughs> the, hey, that, that, that's why that's why they had to drop shadows for a while. They had to completely reimplement them in open scene. Yeah, graph. yeah. and hey. uh, it can already read uh, the Oblivion and Fallout Three slash New Vegas BSAs. It can already read those. Now it's just a matter of get, actually getting the engine to render them properly. So yeah, hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I, let's keep may, this may, open may, reimplementation may. train chugging along. Oh, Run! Yes. Escape! You you might be able to escape, but the people still playing RuneScape can't. Open RSC. Uh, they have a uh, they have a new release. Um, to All I think right, it's version two dot Set the set hits. <laughs> I think it's set this. Yeah. Set this. <laughs> yeah, I, I I I had to read that to make sure read that to make sure that is what I thought it was. Uh, yeah, they have um they have um. <laughs> yeah, a bunch a bunch of moderation functionality uh, got included in this release. Um, they have a decided like screenshots. They do. I mean, it's RuneScape. If you don't know what RuneScape <laughs> looks like, go to www.google.com, <laughs> search for RuneScape, and then you might ad- inadvertently start playing it because it runs off a browser. Um, yeah. yeah, but for people for people who want that OG RuneScape feel, not any of this new hot shit graphics stuff that they've been playing recently, uh, they have uh, uh, it's version two point three point five. It's out. Um, the release notes again have a bunch of moderation stuff. Um, it looks like the game is pretty stable. Um, and they're doing a big code cleanup effort, which is something that a lot of projects don't actually do that often. Try to like yeah. actually make their code consistent and clean and readable. Um, I just thought it was funny. We were talking. We were talking about like um, old online games that like people can't stop playing. Like twenty five oh, years down the way, man, yeah. Ru- yeah, RuneScape. Yeah, <laughs> RuneScape, Evercrack, World of Warcrack, Ultima uh, Online. Yeah, uh, Ra- Ragnarok <laughs> Online is the other big one that has a bunch of private yep. servers. All right, last yeah. but not least, man, look like crab, talk like Nassim. Uh, Kingston, crab fighting, assembly puzzle. Why? Because you hate yourself. But if you hate yourself enough, you can try to do this. Help your crab beat up all other crabs at the beach by programming an assembly. Yay. Do Sounds it. Sounds fun. Read the manual. I mean, it's crab VM. This is brilliant. I love this. I don't know why I love this, probably because I got to had crab people stuck in my head for like 30 minutes. <laughs> But crab it's straight crab up. I mean, what do, how many uh, general pro, uh, uh, wrote four note? Is there a, yeah. Yeah. Five registers. Come on. Yeah. Why not? I mean, that that's simple enough to realize that uh, you, you get a greater appreciation for C because you'll realize that C is just basically <laughs> fancy assembly with some help yes. attached to it. It's just assembly that you can actually read. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, and, and finally, you can run assembly on your crabs. I don't know. It's, it's kind of neat that all these programming games are starting to get a little more popular. Like, I know uh, in Discord, people are getting obsessed about TIS-80. Yeah. MT and yeah. Uh, yeah. Foxy were playing that. Yeah. Like, so yeah. It, 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 it's cool. It's cool to see that, like, th- this This is an interesting way to get people into programming. Just like, hey, it's, it's, not, it's not actually programming. It's a game about crabs. 
And all of a mm-hmm. sudden, you know, assembly. Well, it's uh, a game about crabs that you need to program their movement. It's like, oh, oh, look at what I'm doing. I'm programming a motherboard now. I have this to do is one of the things that I'm really glad that <laughs> because we were lucky uh, billions of years ago when I was a child to get like the editor for like Quake or earlier with Duke Nukem 3D. Mm-hmm. But now you got access to Unity. You get access to Unreal Engine, Godot. I mean, you can just straight up get busy with it. Well, so. uh, especially especially in the early 2000s, they stopped doing that. But like shit with Neverwinter Nights, where they give you like the full game development SDK. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Star, Starcraft had the same thing. They gave, they gave you, they gave the, you the whole level thing. Level. <laughs> yeah. They, they Indeed. They, they, Indeed. All right. Coming up next, the sum can eat a bag of dicks. We're going to tell you what. Welcome to the Chairquisition. This is where we take a game and see if it can survive the trials of Ubuntu, Solus, and Fedora. And then, only then, can we say if we had fun with it. Uh, this week, we're taking a look at Tannenbaum from Black Mill Games, M2H. It's done on Unity 4. You can pick it up for about uh, 20 US or whatever your local particular currency rates that at. What is it? Tannenberg brings the massive battles of the Eastern Front of World War I to life with 64 players fighting for control of key sectors of the battlefield, each one offering a distinct strategic advantage. Uh, we got to thank um, Black Mill Games for sending us keys. They did it before with... Um, wait, did Foxy buy us uh, Verdun or did they send us Verdun keys? The answer has been lost to the ages. I don't yeah. know, just, just, just like our safe word. Well, they the, they did send us some keys for this game, so thank you a lot for that. Now prepare for it to get shit on. Ben, how do it work? Hey, man, tried it out. 1810, new hotness. Uh, didn't have too many problems with it. Uh, one thing I was greeted with was the Unity Scream of Nope in 2019. Minus one share right there. I'm sorry. Um, Because this is also compounded by the fact that all the graphical options are in the damn game. So... <laughs> Wrap your mind around that, gentlemen. Performance at 1080p. We like to test it at that. I know all the kids are playing 1440, but I'm old. Get off my lawn. It manages to hold 60 at 1080p with a 2060-ish. Initial load time for this game can eat a dick. I mean, you can go do things while you're waiting on that, man. 100%. Uh, what does it look like? Well... It's not horrible, but there's a lot of jaggies everywhere, because you guessed it, you're dealing with Unity. Realistic dead horse action, though. I was quite pleased with that. Outside of that, uh, it's brown with the occasional hints of green. You're fighting in forest and fields. Uh, controls, wazd, it moves as a first-person shooter. If you fuck that up, you got bigger problems. So, pretty good on that. Pretty happy with it. With a solid three. Yeah, on uh, Fedora 2864-bit, um... Yeah, Unity Four. I haven't missed you in your configuration screen. Also, I got, I, got, I legitimately got spooked um, the first time the game started up because it's <laughs> it full screened. It wasn't doing anything for like a good couple minutes, so I killed it. And I thought, okay, may, maybe there's something wrong. So I turned on the I turned off the compatibility uh, or the Steam runtime uh, for host libraries thing. And I'm like, oh, I still have to, oh, you know what? I probably have to wait for all the shaders to compile. So five minutes later, <laughs> I actually got into the game. Um, yeah, uh, performance, it does uh, with the 1080 Ti. It definitely keeps above 100 FPS at 1080p. Um, Graphical-wise, it does an effective job of capturing how shitty everything looked in World War I. Um, everything was all foggy and filled with mustard gas, and you couldn't see anything. So I, I can't fault it for historical accuracy. Control wise, like Ven said, was use your mouse. Um, yeah, the 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 one the one thing here is F is stab and E is some. You you can just run over things to use them, which uh, kind of is a little weird, but whatever. I'll give it three chairs just because Unity. Yeah, it's uh. It's the Unity screen of Nope in current year arguments, so it gets dinged a chair out of that. But it, other than the Unity screen of Nope showing up, it does work great. And it holds over 100 FERPs at 1080p, even on Ultra. I don't really know what the hell it's doing, but it, yeah, it just holds it there. Uh, at 2160, it hovers between 40 and 50, so I guess there's that. The uh, the enemies are very hard to spot sometimes. Uh, I feel like in this all, game all, in particular... All the time, Pedro. All yeah. The time. <laughs> uh, in this game in particular, and I'm guessing Verdun as well, uh, people with 2160 monitors are actually going to be at an advantage because they can see more. Because there are no scopes. You can't scope in, so yeah. 
It's uh, the controls. You have separate sliders for when you're just looking around and when you're actually aiming. And you can fully rebind all the keys, so clean bill of health for me, except for that uh, particular Unity screen and nope, so that's three chairs. <laughs> Alright, well there you go. Deal, deal with the Unity 4 pain. Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> all the All right. pain. But on top of that, do you, do you have fun then? Hey man, let's bring the fun. Uh, it's multiplayer, and the best I could find, at least on the east coast of North America, is uh, where the seven people that were playing the game in at even given time. In the first mode, there's three modes, and the other two are permanently empty, at least uh, for the times I've tried to play this game. Uh, this comes from the same lads that brought us for done, and that game actually had some plan planning going on. This just kind of seems like uh, grab a gun, bum rush, live, die, repeat, which has its charm, but uh, in 2019, didn't get a lot from that. Uh, if you do like running around and killing bots, at least for me, uh, in a game that kind of looks like it's about from 2003, I say give this a shot. Jordan, you like it because it looks realistic. I'm like, uh, I don't know, man. It kind of reminds me of Wolfenstein, enemy territory, kind of on a budget without really the community and the group and the fun. Um, it probably would be fun with a larger player base. Pedro doesn't have this issue. Apparently Europe fucking loves this game. Uh, but I, <laughs> as it stands here on the east coast of the North Americas, I can't recommend it because the most I could find were six people playing, and <laughs> those are the people that were always playing. So F you if you end up on the opposing team, bots or not. Yeah, I didn't have a good time with it. I'm sorry. I just can't recommend it. Just one. I mean... The, the, the 100% of this game needs people to be entertaining, and it will be immediately apparent after playing one round of this. They realize, man, this was a boring slog. I want some friends. So I've, I'm like, I, I, I've sent out a call on Discord. I'm like, yo, people on Steam who own this game, who wants to play? So um, Pedro, uh, Arthurin, and I had a bit of a little get together, and then we uh, then we sat down and played a video game. Um, <laughs> and it, it definitely was a lot better when you have like people to shit talk with. I mean, it's 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 a fairly faithful recreation of you know the environment of World War One. That, that was sort of the joke I was beating with the dead horse while we were while we were playing it. It was like, yeah, this it, it, this is a shitty time. Everything sucked. Um, you can't see anything. All the guns suck. You get killed by one stray bullet. It's ba it's basically what World War One was in a nutshell. It was the OG meat grinder. Um, yeah, speak, speaking of uh, sh not being able to see, I hope you like iron sights on guns because that's what you got, and you can move at a fucking snail's pace. Uh, while you're aiming, otherwise, yeah, good luck hitting anything. Even though the scope was invented in the 1800s. Yeah, who'd, who'd have thunk that? I don't know. Um, but anyways, uh, actually actually getting your friends together to play this game is a bit of a challenge, because you see, mm -hmm. you change squads, so you, you change sides from the squad selection, you can... You can create squads from the squad selection, but you can't switch them from a squad, squad selection. What you got to do is go to the score page and then click on the individual squads, and then you can s change your fucking squad, which is idiotic because it is entirely separate from all the other multiplayer functionality. Um, yeah, and Steam, the Steam overlay advertises that it works. That's a lie. But I mean, this is this is very clearly a labor of love because there's like a lot of attention to detail from here, from like the uniforms to the environments to the to the weapons. And if you're into that, if like th this is the style of game you're into, this sort of hardcore historical simulation, you will probably love this. But if you don't, then you're probably not gonna like this game. I'll give it two chairs. It's 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 all right if you can get some buds. Otherwise, it goes down to one. Yeah, it took a while for me, but my brain finally clicked into, like, the olden days when I used to play Medal of Honor Allied Assault online. It's like, oh, it's slow, it's sloggy, and you just take your time and you aim. Okay, cool. And I like first-person shooters in general, and Hattenberg certainly does do its own unique thing with the first-person shooter uh, genre, I guess. Um, thing is... If you're a multiplayer only video game, you kind of need to, you know, give priority to people being able to play that video game with the people that they want to. Uh, as I found, uh, it's like when I was playing with Jordan and Arthurin, Arthurin was like, so how do I join you guys? And I found myself describing it. It's like, oh my god, this isn't intuitive or 
really easy uh, to figure out at all. And Arthurian's like, yeah, they changed the UI. And I started to look at the UI in general, and uh, Jordan already brought this up. It's like, you have to go to the scoreboard and ask one of your teammates to join uh, the, um, the squad that you want to join so you can play with the same people uh, that you'd like to. So... Yeah, that needs a little bit of work. Why is playing with the people that you want to play this game with so difficult? Uh, outside of that, it is a much better World War One game that I've seen from other developers. Not that I've seen many. Fair. Uh, but they do have the Verdun pedigree, so I guess there's that. I will give it two chairs. All right. Well, there you go. Um, this game's probably not going to be for everyone. Uh, World War One historical recreationists will absolutely love this. Um, you got any final thoughts before we fuck off? Tanks. Tanks for nothing. <laughs> Tanks. <laughs> Tanks hey man, for the memories. For the game. I really wish more people were playing it. Then, and it was easier to get people together to play. Yeah. I'll, I'll, Over I'll, here, there's like 90 or 100 people playing during like from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. That's when you're most likely to get the most number of people playing. Hmm. But yeah, apparently not the case in North America. But I'm definitely going to say this is the type of game like Verdun. I mean, if it's your jam, it's your jam. Mm -hmm. So, right on. Uh, eat, eat shit, Pedro. All right, coming up <laughs> next, we actually have some hate mail for once. Someone, someone is very, very angry and wants to tell us about it. Yeah, if you've been with us this whole time, I commend you. You're it's not about Celine time Dion. we put the kibosh on that. <laughs> this is lies. I was promised. I, I mean, I mean no, Pedro no. kind of looks like Celine Dion a little Pretend bit. Pretend you're drowning. No. And I'll paint a venture of Jordan, you. you're the only Canadian here. Y if anyone here is Celine Dion, it's you. Have but you hey, seen a picture you... of Celine Dion? I don't look any... I'm way too fat to be Celine Dion. <laughs> well, in any case, if you'd like to let us know about how much Jordan exactly looks like uh, Celine Dion, you can do so by going to LukeScamCast.com, hitting the contact button, filling out the form, and you pick LGC Weekly as the show you'd like to send your hate mail to. Yes. And some people this week have actually used said form to get in touch with us, including uh, Andrew, who says... Um, well, he's talking about Mind Test. Mind Test. You might wish to have a look at Final Mind Test. Apparently, no links are allowed. Just Google the exact phrase. Yeah, there's a thing about links and spam. Just, yeah. Golems. Uh, it's not another fork. It's the official branch with all the bugs removed and backwards compatibility restored. That sounds good. Uh, this was necessary if Mind Test is to ever be seriously considered for educate uh, for edutech projects yes are you trying lost? to break our pedro <laughs> yes apparently uh also <laughs> runs on man. windows and android but honestly why would you and a bit of juice if you want to make a story about it and we didn't there's been a split in the mind test community over this development cheers andrew i like so the fact that something as small as mind test can have a schism <laughs> i respect that they're like oh man did like the seven people get angry at each other <laughs> It's like, it, it, why exactly would there be a split in the community if they're just, you know, consolidating everything into a version that works really well with everything, including listen, the older stuff? They're just they're friends now, okay? Everything's still going to be cool. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Mind I, test I, is I, neat, 100%. I, I, this is nothing against... Uh, well, fuck Minecraft now, because Microsoft bought it, right? That's how that works. Mm -hmm. But I never get into that. I tried. I drew a Pietus. I went up on my hill. I looked out at my Pietus, and that was that was it with Mind Test. Well, I I, I mean, Mind Mind Test also has the advantage of you know operating over multiple CPU cores, so that that's a thing. Um, yes, not being Java based. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm, Microsoft's I'm, I'm, hard at work making that <laughs> non crasp crass platform yes oh, oh, oh yeah I, 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 I don't know like a mind test schism kind of reminds me of like those two people that like there's like some ancient dialect of like incan that these two people are the only <laughs> two people who speak it left and they don't want to they don't want to talk to each other anymore because they hate each other mm. so that, you know, they're just gonna let the language <laughs> die um yeah, I, 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 I mean it, it's, it's good to see that they're trying to like have a definitive version of mind test so mm -hmm. that yeah. you know mod, mods can target a stable platform because that that's that's the main thing that a lot of like frequently in development games don't have is a stable api to hit 
so that people can, you know, make mods and content for it. There's yeah. that. And I mean, a lot of the open source projects, you know, it's like when you get like a small player base, don't fork it. Maybe. Yeah. Just general, general rule. I mean, you can, but then, you know, then you end up with like one person with the, uh, long story. Anyway, then, then you have, then you end up with devil one. Ladies and gentlemen, um, <laughs> McRee, enough of your heresy. Now that you've checkquisitioned the unhallowed quota of five heretic games, that's not how that works. Castlevania, Stick of Truth, Doom 2016, Into the Breach, Dark Souls 3. Can we look forward to a bright future in which LGC only provides such pub pubicity? I'm just going to throw that in there. Pub pubicity. <laughs> to games pubicity. from developers who actually give a flying fuck about Linux. He says <laughs> on episode 340 fucking one. <laughs> Yeah. I, so we, we we were talking about this this a little bit earlier in the in the pre, -pre super shows and where I wasn't paying attention to. So I, 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 th I think I think you got up and like walked away to do something. I had you um, guys muted because I had to get work done. Sure, <laughs> no, um, I did. But but and we've been talking about it for a while. Um, Win thirty two exes has is positioned to be the dominant gaming executable format. Period. Microsoft doesn't want this. We don't want this as Linux users. But the market has spoken, um, yep. and as and as such, especially with new developments like stuff like Wayland, where a lot of these older games, no one's going to go back and produce additional like Wayland compatible builds. The only way you're going to be able to play these games in the future uh, on like modern hardware using a modern Linux is probably going to be through Proton or Wine because it will support all the compositing and desktop environment stuff. Um, developers had have made it clear that they don't want to put in the extra effort due to time or perceived money constraints or because they don't want to learn a new thing. So it basically boils down to if Linux gaming is going to survive, we're going to have to resort to these compatibility layers. And yes, we can promote we and support native Linux development whenever we can, but we have to, we have to surrender to the reality of the situation. That's, yeah. that's not the way that the market is going. And, you know, if a company like Valve is willing to put their money where their wine is and even be so brazen as to claim that whitelisted games will work as well as they do on Windows with just like a 20 to 35 And if they don't, Pedro, will they hit? refund uh, the purchase of Proton? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the... They're, I don't know. Gonna, they're, they're, they're gonna go to all the wine developers and be like yo give us our money back, yeah. back. <laughs> i mean if you buy a proton game to play with proton you can still get and a you're refund. a filthy fucking heretic is what you are you however if you got a bazillion fucking bundle games from <laughs> six years of purchases you gotta try them i say yeah. it's fair game because it's like if Valve is willing to put their weight behind it and say these will work as well as they do on Windows with just a performance hit, I that's right there. The, that's just laying out the play field. It's like, okay, fair game. <laughs> and, 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 at and, the end of the day, um, I'm going to look at it like this, is we're not Linux Proton cast by any means, but you got to tap the brakes a little bit. Got to tap the brakes, my friend, because... Well over, I mean, we've done more than 360 Linux native games. New thing comes out, we gotta try it. So, you know, we can't be fucked in both, well, we could be fucked in both directions, Jordan. I, I, I mean... From but, now on, we're only covering games on BSD. <laughs> I, I, I mean, we've, we've been threatening to do that for a while. <laughs> Like, like, like way I said, too many stay, games already. <laughs> stay, stay tuned for Linux Gamecast Weekly episode 404. There's going to be some shenanigans. We're going to run BSD from a VM and open Solaris on Haiku. <laughs> <laughs> through, through a Plan 9 hypervisor? Fucking mm -hmm. A, baby. Aw, oh, yeah. And on Unix. that bombshell, ladies and gentlemen, let's cue the music. You can always find us, train wreck, delightful, on fire. Kind of on the rails, it's kind of got a, like one wheel on the rail, the rest of it's just hanging out, flopping around everywhere. It's a floppy train, ultimately. Do you want to get in touch with me? I'm Advent Stone on Twitter. Well, I will probably not argue with you on the internet. Sorry. I know some people like to do that. Don't have the time. But I will get back with no pager. I will not argue with you on the internet. <laughs> I told you. Multiple times. Argue with fucking Pedro. Just 
<laughs> be like, just yes. At, at unaccounted for, just go high. Right he will fucking hurt you with you. Um, but if you do want to scream at me, I'm at Vin Stone on Twitter, mast.lennoxteamcast.com. I remembered, I'm at Vin. You know, Floppy Train used to be my nickname in college. And if you want to hear more, is, baby. <laughs> if you, if you want to see more flopping around, you can, you can stay tuned to uh, the burning at the burning pool on Twitter. Uh, plus, Jordan Swung on Google Plus until the end of March, and at our Mastodon, uh, mastodonlinchkeemcast.com at Frojo. And I am Pedro Mateus. I've basically given up on all of social medias except for Twitter. I'll just I follow people that I actually you know like what they're doing, like Ethan and Iculus and whatever else that's, that, that's it just even yeah pretty it. much <laughs> but if you want to find me that's at unaccounted for you can see it it's right there uh yeah just follow me there i'll be happy to argue with you on twitter if you'd like i like that <laughs> so what did we learn jordan train floppy ratios good enough for government work credits yeah <laughs> <laughs> It's, 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 it's appropriate. You set that up like right at the beginning, too. <laughs> I did. I was legitimately making I, credits in the pre pre super show set. That's why they're a little jerky because we were also doing all this. Uh, it's it's, it's, it's Jeep, still kind of stuff. awesome and yeah. scary to see all I am these awesome people. and scary. No. Yeah. <laughs> and full of hugs. Don't you're hug scary. Yes. Like, do not hug you're, 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 you're full of something, Ben. I learned it by watching you. Probably. <laughs> I'm. I'm. I am a good influence. You're on the internet, Jordan. You're anything but a good influence. I am the best influence. Children, you should emulate my lifestyle. <laughs> don't listen to chair hand. <laughs> don't listen. Don't listen to floppy train. He'll lead you down. You're scaring Frank. <laughs> Look at him. He's confused. <laughs> You're not my real dad. I am your real mom, though. <laughs> Hot. <sighs> listen, oh. I didn't labor for nine hours to squeeze you out of my urethra. <laughs> Bones at all, man. Pick them clean. Die to fire, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bad. Five dudes. <laughs>